All right, today we're going to change a seal kit and shaft sleeve on a Series 80 closed coupled pump. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to close your service valves, make sure that there's no water coming into the volute. The second thing you want to do is go over and disconnect the power. Lock it out, use your own lock so you're the only one that can turn it back on because we're going to be disconnecting wires. After you get it locked out, come over and disconnect your wires and make sure you mark them so you wire it exactly back the way you had it when you took it apart. That way we're almost guaranteed that it'll rotate in the proper direction. So now that we're ready to go to work, the, the first thing I like to do is mark the volute in the cover plate and the cover plate in the motor which I've done prior to starting. That way when you put it back together you can put it back together exactly the way you take it apart. Now that everything is set, valves are closed, we'll start taking the bolts out of the volute cover plate and I like to take every other bolt out of the cover plate because there's still pressure on the pump. All right, now I've got those loose. Pressure's being relieved. Once the pressure is relieved, we can start taking them out. All right, now we've got all the bolts loose out of the cover plate. We'll just lift the whole assembly out and we'll start disassembling the pump. All right, we've got the assembly out, and if you notice the motor style on this pump, uh, it has foot mounts for base mounting also. So it's a unimount motor. Some will have it, some will not. It doesn't mean that it's not specific for this pump. It can also be used on a closed coupled base mounted pump, which we'll film at another time. So we'll do this. We'll take my volute and we'll set this aside. Give a little bit more room to work on the assembly here. And what I'll do is I'll first get the impeller nut out. And we'll take the screwdriver and we'll put it down in the vein. A little bit of pressure. And we'll undo the impeller nut. in and remove it by hand and what you should have is you should have an impeller bolt, lock washer and impeller washer. All right now that I've got the impeller bolt out what we'll do is we will remove the four bolts holding the cover plate to the motor. All right, now that we've got the bolts out of the cover plate, it's time to grab the puller and we'll pull the whole assembly off from the cover plate to the seal kit to the impeller. And we'll just slide it in there. Kind of centers it for you. And we'll latch onto the cover plate. Never pull on the impeller, always use the cover plate. And then I like to pull back on the puller, hand tighten, the puller. So you can let go of it and it sits there, you can grab your wrench. All right, now I'll start to tighten the puller and you'll watch the whole motor bracket, impeller, seal and everything come out at the same time. The impeller popped, that's a good sign. Got it loose. Get the, the puller out of the way. And if you notice, my impeller popped off, so I know it's going to be easy to take off like so. The spring of the seal kit came with it. We'll set it aside. Now what I'll do is I'll just pull the, the cover plate off. You don't have to worry about the seal kit because you're changing it anyways. All right, we've got the cover plate off of the motor. If you notice, it removed everything, the impeller. 
Here's the seal assembly, the carbon side. We'll throw that away because you're changing it. And the white ceramic in the rubber boot. And I'll show you how to remove that real easy. All right, we've got the cover plate off. I want to remove the white ceramic and its boot out of the cover plate. If you notice the gasket came with it, we'll just take that and we'll throw that away with, this, with the old seal kit. Now, as far as the white ceramic in the boot, because you've got the cover plate in hand, all you have to do is flip it over. Normally, I would just take the screwdriver and stick it between the ceramic part of the seal and the cover plate and just give it a twist. But seeing how we're showing you how to do this, I'll lift the cover plate up so you can see the seal fall out the other side. In between the ceramic and the cover plate and just give it a twist and the ceramic falls out. Throw that away. And if you notice the rubber boot stayed in place, that's not difficult. Screwdriver, go around the outside and just remove it. All right, now that we've got the seal, the ceramic side of the seal kit and the rubber boot out and the gasket off, we'll just do a kind of a check of the cover plate and make sure it's in good shape. Make sure there's nothing where the gasket's going to go when we put it back together. So I like to wipe it down. And then in where the rubber boot and white ceramic go, you want to inspect the flat part of this right here. Make sure it's not pitted or chipped. If it's pitted or chipped a little bit, it, it's okay. But it has to be true and flat. The rubber boot will make up some decay, but not a lot. So we'll make sure this is cleaned up, scratch it up, wipe it out with your towel. Now, in some cases on some of the older Series 80 pumps, there's a raise in here that's going to impede putting the new rubber boot in. There's a way around that without having to buy a new cover plate. What you'll do is you'll take a chisel or a strong screwdriver and you'll go around that inner ridge with a hammer and you'll flatten it just like this one is here and then clean it up good and then you'll be able to insert the new style rubber boot that comes with the white ceramic. All right, now that we've got the cover plate all cleaned up, inspected, we'll set it aside. Now we'll go to the motor. The motor has the brass uh, shaft sleeve on it along with the slinger. We'll take the slinger off and all the slinger does is if your seal lets loose, water always wants to travel up the shaft. The slinger is on the shaft so if the water is traveling, it flings it away from the front motor bearing. That's the purpose of the slinger. So we'll take the slinger off and just check it. Make sure it's pliable. Make sure it fits on the shaft tight. If it does, reuse it. If it doesn't, pick up a new one. They're not that expensive. And mine's pretty good, so I'll reuse it and I'll set that aside. All right, now we're going to clean up the brass shaft sleeve on the motor. Obviously, mine is a new pump. Now's the time to inspect it. Make sure it doesn't have any pits or grooves in it. If it does, you'll have to change it. If it doesn't, all you have to do is clean it up with some emery cloth. And John, I think I'll come to your side of the table so you can see me do this. All right, sometimes there is a little bit of paint from manufacturing on them. I just take a screwdriver and chip some of that away. Get some of it off of there. That way it doesn't plug up your emery cloth. All right, now that we've got a lot of the buildup of the paint off, we can just buff it up with a piece of emery cloth. We make it look like new. Now what I'll also do is if you notice the impeller key is still in here, so I'll get that out of the way too. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're difficult. We'll take a hammer and a screwdriver and very carefully we'll pop it out so we can pry it up and pull it out. Just get it past the end of the shaft so you can grab it. or. Just tap it up with the hammer and it'll fall right out. We're going to reuse that. 
Now that I've got that out of the way, I'll take my emery cloth and just for the sake of making it easier putting the pump back together, I'll also buff up where the impeller sits on the shaft. And that looks good. And now that we're the, to this point, this is where I would start to put the pump back together, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to remove the shaft sleeve and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, now what I'll do is I will start my torch and we'll heat that shaft sleeve up and we'll drive it off with a screwdriver and a hammer. All right, I got my torch lit. Make sure you have a wet rag with you. And we'll heat up the shaft sleeve and we'll drive it, drive it off the shaft. Uh, another thing before I start, I like to aim the flame away from the front of the motor because there obviously is a bearing in here. It'll still transfer some heat, but you shouldn't hurt it. Power change on the shaft sleeve. On the Series 80, I like to rotate it a little bit to make sure I get to the other side. Looks good and hot to me, so I'll shut my torch off. All right, Johnny, you're going to get one shot at this. <laughs> Looks like it's good and hot. We'll take our screwdriver and our hammer. Now, I like to start right back here where there's normally a seam, and I like to try to separate it, which I got lucky and it did. Now what I'll do is I'll put a notch in the sleeve and use that as kind of a base point and I'll drive it off of the shaft. because it's hot. Now what I like to do is I like to cool off the shaft. <laughs> A little bit warm. Now the reason why we heat the shaft sleeve up is because it's held on by Loctite. So you have to get that Loctite pliable again. All right, you'll see I got the shaft sleeve off, still very warm. And if you notice, separated from the collar on the motor, make sure that it's started, put a notch in it with your screwdriver, and drive it at about a 45 degree angle. Just make a notch, hit it with a hammer, and it comes right off the shaft. All right, John, I'm going to come to your side, and I'm going to clean the shaft up again where the sleeve was. You want to get all that old Loctite off of there. So again, we'll go back to the emery cloth. I'll get my shaft sleeve ready. We'll take our screwdriver and make sure there is no extra Loctite on here, which there looks like there might be a little bit in this back groove. And I'll back it up so it lands on the table for you. See, you want to get all of that stuff out of there. Otherwise, the new shaft sleeve might leak. And the shaft looks pretty clean. So now I'll take my emery cloth and buff it up and make sure everything is out of there. All 
All right, now we've got the shaft looking nice and new. We'll wipe it off, put the new shaft sleeve on. So the shaft sleeve comes as kind of a little mini kit. You get the shaft sleeve, you get some 609 Loctite, it's green and hardens very fast. Set the little plastic bag aside. And it comes with directions. Yeah, we don't follow them. We're gonna do it Tom's way. All right, we've got the shaft sleeve, emery cloth. We're gonna stuff up the inside. Score it just a little bit and to make sure that there's no tarnish or anything on there. Wipe it out a little bit. All right, the shaft is scuffed up. I got the inside of the shaft sleeve scuffed up. We're gonna open up the tube of Loctite. Now you don't need to use it all, but I do. It's better to use it all than not use enough. And I'm only putting a rag down because I'm working on a film table, so. We'll take the Loctite, start squeezing it on around the key area, all the way around the shaft, all the way to the back of the shaft, and then the rest in the middle. Now, when I put the shaft on, I'm gonna twist it when I put it on and then pull it off and put it on the other way. All right, John, here we go. You get one shot. Shaft sleeve on, slide it into place, kind of. Wiggle, rotate, make sure that Loctite gets around. We'll pull it off, turn it around, slide it back into position. Rotate, lock it up against the back of the collar on the shaft of the motor and hold it there for five, 10 seconds. And we'll let it sit and it's already somewhat tight. So I can let go of it, then we'll take a towel and we'll quick wipe around it, make sure there's no Loctite hanging up anywhere. And it looks good and clean. And now we'll wanna scuff up the shaft sleeve. I'll turn it towards you and I'll come over on your side again, John. And we'll just scuff up the outer side of the shaft sleeve. Get some of the tarnish off it. Wipe it up. And so we don't forget, now's a good time to put on your water slinger. Just slide it over the new sleeve. If you notice, it's the old one and it's nice and tight. And I put it back kind of towards the very back of the shaft sleeve. We'll make the adjustment once I get the pump put back together. Now I'm going to take the impeller key and just clean it up a little bit in case I dinged it with the screwdriver when I took it out. Quarter turn. Removes any burrs that might be in it when I removed it from the shaft and cleans it up a little bit. Makes it just a little easier for the installation of the impeller. All right, take the impeller key. We'll put it in the shaft, down into the shaft. <clears throat> Push it as far back as you can. Then I take my hammer and tap it lightly till it's flush with the end of the shaft and then just make sure it's seated in place. All right, now the motor side is ready to go. We'll set it aside. <clears throat> And I'll get my cover plate in here. And we'll install the white ceramic and the boot at the same time. We'll get some liquid soap. Don't use grease or petroleum products. It's not good for the seal. 
Also with this seal, you don't have to worry about touching it unless your hands are really greasy or slimy with lube or anything like that. Liquid soap around the outer rim of the rubber boot. You can use as much as you want. And we'll take some out of the cup and we'll put it on the cover plate right on the inner ring here. Get it good and slippery. Wipe your finger off. And we'll set the ceramic with the rubber boot right in place as close to center as you can get it. Two thumbs. Cross from each other, push down as hard as you can at even pressure on both fingers or thumbs. Push it into place. Make sure it bottoms out. Give it a second to settle, see if sometimes they'll pop back out. This one's staying in place. So I take my rag, we'll clean the excess. Look at that, popped out. We'll do that again. Two thumbs, push it down in place. Again, we'll clean it up. All right, now the cover plate is ready to be attached to the motor. So what we'll do here is put the motor up on end. Remember the marks that you marked at the beginning. So we'll find our mark that mounts to the motor itself. We'll drop it on real slow and careful not to hit the rubber boot or the ceramic seal over the shaft sleeve. Down slowly. Lining up your marks, and they're pretty close, and now we'll start bolting it down. I've got the bolt holes well aligned, finger tight them. finger tight. We'll take our wrench and we'll snug them up and I like to go across. Now when you tighten them, snug, not over tight. Go to the opposite side. All right, we've got the motor bracket tight. Now it's time to put on the carbon side of the seal with the spring and the impeller. So we'll get our impeller washer and bolt and lock washer in place. <clears throat> Impeller, spring, carbon side of seal. I'll move these out of the way, John, so you can get a good shot of this. Set the motor down. Take our soap. <coughs> soak up the end of the shaft sleeve. You don't have to, to put too much soap other than on the end of the shaft sleeve because that's about as far as the seal's gonna go. And soap on the rubber of the carbon side. Just on the outer ring because that's really the only thing that seals itself to the shaft sleeve. All right, here we go. When you're pushing it on the shaft, make sure that it stays in the two dimples. Slide it over, center it, push it on as even as you can until it bottoms out, like so. Take your towel, clean off the excess soap that we've got on there. And then I like to take my screwdriver, John if you want to watch this, very gently in between the tabs with the rubber boot and the outer ring of the seal, I'm going to put this right here. We'll hold it firmly, give it a couple of taps. 
and then go to the other side and do the same thing. You're making sure that that seal kit is seated in place. From there, we'll put the keyway up. We'll grab our impeller and spring and lock washer, bolt, and impeller washer. Spring onto the impeller. A little bit of soap. Put this in place. Make sure that the spring goes over the outer side of the, of the carbon side of the seal. Line up your keyway and we'll pull it in. Now I'm going to pull it real tight. And then I'll reach for the uh, locking nut and everything and we'll tighten it up. <laughs> All right, good. Bottomed out. What the impeller is hitting is actually the end of the shaft sleeve. Put the bolt in. And we'll finger tight it. All right, now we'll take our wrench and screwdriver again. Screwdriver in the vein. No pressure this time because it's going against the grain of the impeller, so you can just use it as kind of a lock. And we'll tighten up the impeller nut. And again, snug, not tight. Okay. All right, now that we've got the impeller in place, we're ready to put it into the volute body. Now, the first thing I'll do is a gasket. And because most of the time the motors are vertical, I'm going to use a little bit more soap than I normally would to hold the gasket in place. I'm going to give it a good coating around the ring where the gasket sits because I don't want it to drop out when I flip this over. You'll see what I mean in a second. Gasket in place. Round the ring and let's hope it holds. All right, before we put it into the volute, we're gonna check the rubber slinger and if you can see where we put it on the shaft sleeve. I'll spin it for you, John. We put it back on the shaft sleeve, hoping that it would be in the middle, and that's exactly where it is. So it's not impeding anything, and it'll do its job if the seal busts loose. So now what I'll do is I'll bring the volute back in here. We'll set it in place, and we'll hope that the gasket stays, and I'm gonna drop it right into the volute. Make sure you line up the marks that you made before you took the pump apart. Grab it like so. Set it in place, get yourself adjusted. Drop it in. The gasket stayed on, which we're lucky. And what you can do is you can move it around to find your bolt holes and make sure it's lined up by the mark that you made when we first started. Now what I'll do is I'll start putting the bolts in. All right, now we'll tighten them, going a, like a cross pattern. All right, now that we've got the volute tight, we can open our service valves, make sure it's not leaking. If it's not leaking and everything seems okay, you can rewire the motor exactly how you uh, disconnected the wires. Then go to your panel and unlock it. Now what you want to do is you want to bump start it just in case and you want to make sure that it's rotating in the proper direction. And then you're ready to pump some water. I'm going to smoke. 